One of the greatest challenges facing LVQ Women's Health is that there isn't a key issue. And I think that that's been a, a real problem for us in terms of gaining traction. There hasn't been one issue that we can kind of put forward and say, hey, this is the thing that's going to kill us. And some of those issues around the, the complexities, I'm calling it the complexities of sexuality and humanity, that are so difficult to capture in research. So the fact that someone might identify as a lesbian, but that says very little often, or in many cases, about what people do in bed. I've seen people disengage entirely from research because what is your gender is asked incorrectly or inappropriately. You know, I've been around for a long while, so I realise that I have my own, um, my own unconscious and conscious bias. When we start to travel up the coast, uh, we might have the beauty of the landscape, but we don't have the services. In dogs and bikes, personally, I've always looked after my bike better than myself. You know, one thing I'd really like to see is just more um, like cultural awareness for doctors. You know, explaining my relationships and I'd really like them to have a bit more knowledge. I'd love more GPs to come to the next conference next year. I would like to see less domestic violence and how we would achieve that is through education and raising awareness. That's what I would like to see in the next five years because we're in a crisis. We'll have situations where sometimes people will say things like trans women aren't women and it's important to be able to talk about those things in a way that's constructive. You know, we've come a long way, but there's still so much more we can do and so much more respectful communication we can have between different parts of the community. Being fafafina has a, has a lay of term. Uh, it can be trans, it can be gay, but you know, in my culture, there's a big respect for fafafina. We are a population that is invisible in most data sets around most health issues. Mainstream campaigns around our major health issues like breast screening, like cervical screening, all of those sorts of mainstream issues, quit smoking programs, are not necessarily reaching this group of people in our communities and they're being essentially left behind. As a trans feminine person and somebody who experiences their gender identity in a non-binary way, there are not many women's spaces that I would feel safe or I feel included in. In our LGBTI acronym, there's parts of that that have taken precedent. There's social determinants to health and uh, racism really affects people's access to health. My experience as a gay person in the church has been a fairly difficult one. It's not an easy journey and we know that for many people, church and support don't go hand in hand. As we reframe and think about our, our focus in our work, that make sure that we don't leave anyone behind. And I think about, um, in particular, sister girls and um, LB, other LBQ Aboriginal women and Torres Strait Islander women, women with disabilities, and that people like me can, uh, very importantly, take a seat and listen and learn and not take up space. I think that's really, really important. I think it's just having a place on the radar. I'm a second generation lesbian, so I guess I grew up in the movement beforehand, so it's been a big change, but yet there's still a long way to go. But I hope that what we keep doing is, as well as hearing the voices and the content, we attend to the process and we say, what is it that we could do differently? How can we not replicate um, what happens to us when we become othered or tacked on to the end of policy. What's inspiring me would be, yeah, the women who are um, working within a margin, within a margin, within a margin. I work closely with the police. I can safely say there's some good police. I think the most exciting development at the moment is seeing the increased focus on people with intersex variations and variations of sex characteristics. Maybe we should be looking for more commonality rather than points of difference, because the more we go for points of difference, I, I worry that we're splintering off and that we're not embracing each other and accepting each other. So I think it's important that these trans and gender diverse groups have their visibility, acknowledge for who they are, that they come from a different background and that, that, you know, that we're able to educate each other about the various cultures. I think it's a healthy thing to have. I think the gift we get in doing that is everyone becomes more caring and aware for everyone, not just for um, our community. So it's sort of got a double blessing, if you like. <laughs>